David Carr. You can see David, the network and uh, NFL network analyst tonight on NFL Total Access at 7 p.m. Eastern. How surprised were you what happened to the Rams at home there, David? It's pretty surprising. Um, defensively, they, they're not as strong as they were last year, obviously. I think that Bruce Arians has done a good job with Jameis. It was a little shaky at the beginning, but, you know, last year they led the league in passing. And so they had the, they had the ability to go out there and continue to do that. He's just, he's just found a, a nice little mixture with that defense. I mean, Todd Bowles done a fantastic job. Shaq Barrett has got nine sacks. So they made it tough on Jared Goff. I, I wrote an article on NFL.com a couple weeks ago about, about kind of Jared Goff and, and his struggles. Just seeing, seeing defense. You know, he's still a young quarterback, and they've really relied on the play-action pass game and the run game of Todd Gurley and to kind of move the pocket to make big plays. Anytime they get in a situation where they have to drop back and throw the football, yeah. they've struggled a little bit, and it's kind of been that system as well. You, you go back to Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan. They've always been good in the run and the misdirection play-action, but as soon as they get into a drop-back pass game, it, they kind of struggle a little bit, so that's kind of been the same case. I mean, he threw for 500 yards, but he still, Jared didn't look sharp, so you got to give a little credit to that defense as well. Yeah, I think as they move forward, with if you don't have the play action, and you know this better than anybody as a former quarterback, that ability to have play action, boy, that makes that quarterback so much better. And I, I, I would be concerned with the Rams. If you're not really worried about Todd Gurley the way you once were, then all of a sudden it's Jared Goff as a pocket passer. Right, exactly. And, you know, there's a you know, Gary Kubiak, who's now in Minnesota. He, the same offense has been around forever. And so I remember having a conversation with him at one point, and he really believes, and it's almost the philosophy of that coaching tree, is that you can only get big plays in the passing game by extending the pocket and moving and kind of creating just huge open spaces for these guys to run free out of these tight formations. And that's what they've done. And as soon as they go to just the drop-back pass game, they try and keep up with teams you know, like Tampa Bay or whatnot. You get in that mode, they're just not as good. And Jared Goff, I remember when he came out of college, I remember Jeff Fisher told me, he was on the NFL Network one day, he said, the only thing Jared Goff knows about the other defense is that they're wearing a different color jersey. So there was like a there was a big learning curve for him to understand what he's seeing, recognizing the defense, and then making the appropriate throw. And he still struggles in that area. And that's not to say he's not a great quarterback. He's excellent in what Sean McVay asked him to do with the play action game, and he's very accurate in that mode. But just like you said, if you don't have that element, if Todd Gurley is not what he was maybe last year, then the threat really isn't there. And then you almost feel like you have to kind of keep up with teams in a different way and try and create offense another way. And it just hasn't been – that's not their – that's not where they're best. Explain what happened to the Cowboys' offense last night. Well, they faced a good defense. I mean, obviously the first couple of games they've played this year have been against teams that have struggled a little bit. Offensively, when, when you have Zeke out there and he's healthy and he's not cracking off the 10, 12, 15-yard runs, I mean, that's what they've done, really. With that offensive line, they've just leaned on that. Now, Kyle, he's done a good job coming in and kind of changing that offense up and, you know, making it, making it more quarterback-friendly, given Dak answers with pre-snap alignments and shifts and motions. He's done a good job. I, I applaud him for that. But New Orleans is a good football team, especially on the defensive side. And when you're forced to make plays on the outside, like Marshawn Lattimore, he plays great against, you know, against top-level guys. Sometimes we, we get on him a little bit about getting beat, you know, by just average guys out there. But when it's a top guy, when it's Amari Cooper – I mean, he steps up, and, and he, played, he played well the other night, and they put him in a lot of man coverage situations. So they really challenged Dak and the Cowboys to make throws on the outside. Now, he made a couple, but he didn't make enough to, to really kind of push them over the edge. I mean, New Orleans is a good defense. I think that's what we're going to find out later on as we go. And as soon as they get Drew back, they're going to be there at the end. So they played a good football team, and they just came up short. Any concerns about signing Dak Prescott to that long-term contract? Yes, I think so. I, I mean, but at the same time, he's their franchise quarterback. And I've said this when this topic comes up. You know, everyone's looking for that guy. And they, they have a guy in Dallas. Now, is he Pat Mahomes? No, I mean, but who is? You know, so you, you have your guy that is effective in your system. You played a good defense. You know, for the first couple of weeks, he did what he's supposed to do against, you know, average or below average defenses and then chop them up and go out there. He's just going to have to really find a way to make some plays when it counts and for the most part, I mean, even last night, he went down there. He drove down the field, hit a nice throw to Randall Cobb. I mean, they had a chance. Uh, I thought New Orleans was brilliant what they did on the Hail Mary. I wish more teams would do that in that Hail Mary situation. 
some guys just let the quarterback sit back there for, you know, five or six seconds, let your guys get down the field. They, they pressured him off the edge, and I thought it was brilliant. Got a hit on him. Yeah. But, you know, Dax, he's been, he's been pretty clutch in those situations, honestly. If we're, if we're really looking at it, I mean, since, what, 2016, he's got the most fourth-quarter comebacks of any, any quarterback in the league. So he plays well in those situations. I think that I, I think that I would feel comfortable if I was the Cowboys saying he's my franchise quarterback going forward. We just know what it is. I mean, that's the going rate is just he's going to be the highest paid guy. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but it's the nature of the position that, that that's what they're doing right now. Can you cover the Raiders objectively? No, absolutely not. I'm going <laughs> to, I'll attempt it every day, but I mean, let's just be real. I mean, I'm going to, they asked me, okay, Dave, we got, got to give out game balls, you know, tonight on the show. Josh Jacobs, just give. I mean, he's the best player I saw on Sunday. And then Josh Jacobs, he had like 70 yards. It doesn't matter. He was fantastic. <laughs> he ran the football. He closed the game out. He caught the ball well. I mean, he only had two catches. Dave. It doesn't matter. Give it to Josh Jacobs. I, I try, man, but it's it's uh it, it's depressing for me when they lose on 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 Mondays. I'm, I go into work and people are like, oh, okay, we got to get Dave's energy level up. Like he's depressed, you know. So it's very nice when they win a football game against the Colts, even though they were out without T. Y. Hilton. You know, without a lot of their guys, so it was. Uh, it's a good win. Can you be objective with your brother after a game? If he said, "How do you think I play?" Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's. Uh, I can. I can absolutely do that. A lot of times, that that stuff doesn't make TV or radio. But I. Uh, I enjoy my conversations with Derek after games. He called me last night, and I talked to him He's on his way to London, and just talked openly about the game. I thought he did a great job. Honestly, there were some opportunities that I think both. Both him and Gruden would have liked to have back last week against Minnesota with some shots down the field. And you know, they protected well yesterday against the Colts, and he was able to take some of those throws, made a nice throw on the touchdown to Foster, um, threw the ball well down the field to Tyrell Williams in a, in a situation where maybe he doesn't throw that one up last you know, last week. But he's trusted his guys, and, and they protected well enough to where he could make some of those throws. So, And he's, he's accurate down the field. I mean, he does a good job. I think that – you know, the conversation I had last year with John, it was after, I think it was like at week eight or nine, we were up there for a game. And he came up after the after the game, was talking to the family, and I uh, he just started having a conversation with me and Derek, really kind of off to the side. He's like, I got to really trust your brother's arm a little bit more. You know, I think that's been kind of a work in progress. Is mm. John is, the nature of his offense is completions, high completion percentage. And he loves Derek because he'll complete 70% of his passes. Like, if you tell Derek we want completions, he's going to get you three out of four. He's going to hit him, but there's a there's an element of, you know, I think that where Derek really shines and he has kind of his whole life, he's been able to push the ball down the field with accuracy. And if they don't really make that something that they focus on, then he's not going to do it. He's going to find the completion. But I thought I thought yesterday they did a good job of consciously, you know, forcing some shots down the field, and his guys made some plays. So they just got to continue to build on that, and I think that'll give him a chance. We're talking to David Carr, NFL Network analyst. You can see him tonight, NFL Total Access at 7 p.m. Eastern. If Nick Foles was healthy right now, finish that sentence. Then he'd be he'd be on the sideline healthy and watching Gardner Minshew throw the football around. Could you imagine? Now? I know that, you know, we get caught up in how much money somebody makes, but... It's interesting, you know, the field. I mean, it's just like Gardner's the guy, really. I, I think that he's he's just the guy that he's inspired confidence and hope in a team, even though Jalen Ramsey and all that nonsense is going on. I mean, they still went out in Denver and, and found a way to, to get a win. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, he's uh, – when you're in a situation like that and you don't have a great football team, a guy, a quarterback that gives you hope and can run around and buy time and make plays like he did on a touchdown throw late in that game, I mean, Nick Foles isn't going to do that. You know, Nick Foles will go in and he'll play good football for you, but – I mean, right now, this is what they need. This Gardner is the best thing they they can have going for them with all the nonsense with Jalen Ramsey, and with, with where their team is. So I think I think Nick would be would be watching Gardner play football. It's just, and I, if he's healthy, he comes back. I think he still watches him. I don't know what they do next year because I don't I don't feel like Minshew is a guy. Like sometimes you get guys, and honestly, Baker's kind of in this role a little bit. Baker will throw some balls into coverage, and you're kind of you kind of question like, why? Okay, why'd you make that throw? And I, I understand you're giving your guy a chance. But what Minshew does is he makes those above the X's and O's plays, but then he doesn't really make the negative plays. He doesn't put your team in bad situations. And I think that, you know, with behind the mustache and the Uncle Rico persona, like he's a smart football player. When you watch him on film, he understands exactly what he's seeing from the defense. And, and at a young age like this, I mean, that's, that's really impressive to me. So 
I think he's there for the long haul, honestly. And they'll mm. just have a they'll have to have a decision in, in the off season. So it's it's fun to watch him because he looks like he's a kind of a loose cannon, but in reality, he he knows what he's doing. It's it's fun to watch. David, great to catch up with you as always. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. You too, bud. Thanks, man. That's uh, David Carr, NFL Network analyst. You can see him tonight, NFL Total Access at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thursday night football, Rams Seahawks on Fox, NFL Network, and Amazon Prime Video. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.